What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and this is Rant TNH, where on Mondays uh, I just rant about whatever is on my mind. And since today we just finished recording next week's li- or this week's liquor run, I'm drinking wine. So uh, I think my thoughts will be a little bit more coherent and poetic. Uh, let's do a quick wristwatch check, and then we'll get into my episode, which is kind of a revisiting. So let's do it. Okay, so today I'm wearing uh, this. I mean, ugh, I'm almost speechless. This chronograph. Uh, it, it's marked Fluto, but t- uh, to me, the, the dial on this watch is copper dial. The way it plays with those blue, uh, the way it plays with those blue uh, steel hands is just unbelievable. Uh, you guys know, if you, if you know me, you know I am not uh, a chronograph guy. Um, I admire them. I think that they're beautiful, but I've never had the compulsion to keep one. I want to keep this watch so badly I think it's totally uh, totally gorgeous and it hurts right now and all the new additions I think it's two two on Tuesday and two on Thursday are going to be released uh, well this week on Thursday uh, Tuesday and on Thursday so check out on theoandharris.com stay tuned for the new additions they, they including this are freaking awesome so check them out really hurts but let's get into the episode. okay uh, so I think it was last two weeks ago I think two weeks ago right now uh, we did uh, I did I did an ask TNH uh, responding to the new release of the paddock 40th anniversary Nautilus um, and I, 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 uh, I know I don't want to you know revisit it again because I already talked about it my thoughts are kind of on the table but I feel like the game has changed a little bit people have released photos of the watch uh, in the metal people have done you know n- recent reports on the watch and and all of a sudden the tides are turning and this watch is getting a more favorable you know favorable review uh, and I think that it's very important for me to respond to that uh, because I think that my initial message is being lost so you know in efforts of not losing my initial message I'm going to revisit so, what did they release? Paddock released two watches, just a uh, you know, quick recap. They released, uh, in celebration for the 40th anniversary of the Nautilus, one of the most famous Paddock Philippe watches ever, uh, they released uh, two watches. The 5711 reissue, uh, and a 5980-ish reissue, 5976, <laughs> and a new one behind the camera. Uh, both watches were released uh, in platinum, with these you know, blue dials and baguette uh, hour markers. The 5976 was, I mean, totally, I mean, totally on Viagra, huge. I mean, 49 millimeters as opposed to 45 or 44 and a half. Ridiculous watches. Um, so I attacked two, two things. One, of course, I talked about the, the aesthetics of the watch, which at the time I thought were, you know, were ugly. I think the designs were not really well, pot, uh, well thought out. I liked the 5711. I hated the 5976. 5976? I hate it. I think it's, I think it's way too big. I can't really see it uh, suiting really almost anyone's wrist. Uh, but that was just one of the prongs. And I feel like that prong, that, that critique is being uh, countered now. Like I said, people are releasing photos. Uh, and let's put some photos here and here. Uh, oh, actually, time out. Let's put the photos of the initial release up, the initial paddock release. These are, these are the photos from which everyone drew their initial opinions. Uh, and in these photos, I think that everything is very ugly. I do. Nothing looks understated. I think that the tombstone dial, tomb, you know, like, you know, put up a tombstone joke uh, right there. I think it's ugly, ugly a watch. But um, inevitably, the watches came out and they became, you know, in the, they were in the hands of, of bloggers from Hodinkee to this one, to that one, to everyone. Uh, not Theo and Harris, but <laughs> to, to a lot of big bloggers. Uh, and, and the watches both are prettier uh, than we initially thought. And because of that, bloggers like Hodinkee and like so many other people are now saying like, oh guys, you gave them too hard of a time. Like the watches look much nicer in person than they did in the, in the, in the release. To which, you know, my answer, which is basically the, the, where this rant begins is not the point, man. Like, not the point at all. I, I, don't, I, I You know, yes, the watch happened to be ugly, and that bothered me, but even if it was the most beautiful, you know, watch with the same idea, you know, and I'll get into the idea in a second, it would have been awful in my opinion. My problem was, yes, the fact it was ugly, but, you know, or my, my, my idea that it was ugly, my opinion at the time, which now it's revised a little bit. It's a lot prettier in person um, or in these, you know, in these photos, uh, in the new photos. But my idea still remains. The, my, the, the, the foundation of my opinion that this is a awful watch still maintains and I know that you know and once again it's an opinion it's totally I'm not this is not gospel you can disagree with me I'm totally fine and I do think this is a pretty watch now but here's my point the Nautilus was made famous by being a humble steel watch that transcended what it meant to be luxury right so what about this what about this garish piece of heavy platinum and baguette diamonds 
has anything, any relation apart from, you know, uh, case dimensions, uh, or at least in the 5711, to the original Nautilus. What is being, you know, wh what is being commemorated? To me, the Nautilus didn't succeed because it was a pretty watch. The Nautilus is a monumental success uh, because of what it meant to the industry, as well as the Royal Oak. They were, they were enormous successes because they proved, I would say single-handedly, but they both proved, uh, that a steel watch could stand on its own as a piece of monumental luxury, which is true. 140%. I love so many steel watches now, right? And, and which could totally be attributed to the Royal Oak and the Nautilus. I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, Glasshood Original, you know, could make a panomatic lunar in steel. Although, can I really, you know, trace that to the, to the paddock and to the Admar? No, it's hard. But they're the first guys, to, well, at least first guys to my knowledge, to say like, you know, f it. Like, we're going to make luxury in steel, you know? And although the, the, the Royal Oak looks nothing like the panomatic lunar or the Senator 60s, that foundational idea, that opinion, that movement is there in that watch. So to me, I mean, like screw the porthole, as John Claude Beaver, you know, calls the designs, these, these porthole designs. You're like, f that, I don't care about the design at the moment. It's the 40th anniversary and I want to get nostalgic. You know, I want to get, I want to, I want to remember what made Paddock, uh, what made the Nautilus a legend to begin with. And once again, I, I know I talked about this briefly, but I feel like, I feel like, too many bloggers are going to feel like they had the last word on this. Like they're the ones that, oh, well, we released the real photos, the photos, and it's prettier than you guys thought, so you're all dumb. No. You know, well, well, yes, you know, you're right, it is prettier than I thought. But found, like, f f fundamentally, foundationally, it's ridiculous. And I 145% stand against their f the way they celebrated their 40th anniversary. It's not about, you know, the garish gifts. You know, even like, even when like a couple is married for like 50 years and, and, and they do, uh, you know, and they have, a, they have a party, right? And then once again, this sounds like very anecdotal and very kind of like random, but it's true. I think that, you know, a wife or a husband is going to respect and admire and be happy and feel warm and appreciative about a little note or about a whisper in the ear or about like a hug or a kiss than they would buy the Cadillac that the husband that the significant other just bought. It's not about money and garishness sometimes. You know what I mean? Like I feel I feel like you know Marx almost. You know I'm like well we shouldn't have expensive things. I don't feel that way. It's not the point. I'm 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 advocating for a better Nautilus, not no Nautilus, just a better Nautilus, a Nautilus that actually means something. So I'm sorry to get on the camera and talk about this again and release another video about the same topic, but I feel like. I, I, I feel like my message would have been lost if I didn't because too many people are, are almost rejoicing in this watch now because it kind of is pretty and because you kind of don't recognize or don't see the ugly uh, anniversary writing on the dial. Not the point. The point is that Paddock has totally lost sight of what is important. The point is that Paddock totally forgot or, or, or has such you know, disdain or disregard for exactly the movement that made them important in the Nautilus. And that's f***ed up. <laughs> that's my rant. Thank you guys for watching Rant TNH. Um, comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh, this is going to be a little bit of a feisty one. So uh, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a terrific Monday.